Now, let's go ahead and take a look at, at a more interesting Silverlight plugin, right? Um, what I wanted to do here was I just wanted to kind of showcase some of the big cool things that we can do with 2.0. So this plugin is going to have the following feature set, right? I'm going to illustrate the use of some new layout managers. One of the things that we had in uh, 1.0, we pretty much had a canvas and that was it. Okay? And that wasn't good enough for building a really easy UI. Well, now we got some other things, like we would find in WPF, like a grid. Okay, so we can start to arrange content through cells. I'm also going to illustrate some animation and hit testing. So for those of you who have done desktop programming, I want you to think back to your MFC days, right, or your Win32 days, or your Windows Forms days, and imagine the kind of code you would have to write to have animation, hit testing, all the threads you have to manage. We're going to get all of this for free by typing in some markup. Okay, so pretty sweet. Then we're going to talk about the integration of Windows Communication Foundation, right? which again is a pretty sweet aspect of 2.0. I can have my Silverlight plugin, which came from that web server, talk to that server over there to get something else. Okay, there are a couple of caveats to that that I'll point out. Uh, then I'll talk a little bit about some asynchronous calls. Okay, so just like when you are talking to any other kind of service, there's a proxy generator, right? It's going to give you support for synchronous and asynchronous calls. And then we'll also talk a bit about those Silverlight controls of ASP.NET, which allow you to kind of plug in that web content. But it's a different programming model, which again unifies a whole bunch of different plumbings. So you could use WCF to build a single service, which exposes its functionality through a named pipe, uh, you know, HTTP binding and a, um, you know, a TCP binding. So the same service can have multiple endpoints. So, right? so instead of having to write massive different code, okay, now, now I'm a name piped. <laughs> now I'm a web service. Oh, no, no, I'm, now I'm going to go across the remoting layer. Right? We just have one way to do that now. Okay? So if you haven't done a lot of WCF, just pretend that I'm doing a basic everyday XML web service and you'll be in good shape. That's basically what we're going to be building as the end result. Okay? Now here is uh, another little stumbling block that I kind of figured out the hard way. When you are building a Silverlight plugin that needs to do an out of bandwidth call to some arbitrary server somewhere using WCF, the server, right, so the IIS install, which is going to allow that incoming call needs to have a very special file called client access policy dot xml okay that needs to be installed in the root of your folder your web install path right so for example you know inet pub slash www root what you have to put in that folder is exactly as you see here <laughs> Now, obviously, you probably can't read that verbatim right now. It's just plumbing grunge that tells that particular install of IIS, expect calls, <laughs> okay? Enable this support for a Silverlight applet to come and talk to you in a safe, secure manner, okay? If you don't do that and you forget to do that, like I forgot to do that, everything breaks, <laughs> okay? Now, that little caveat is actually documented somewhere in the Silverlight 2.0 documentation. I would say your best bet to find it is uh, just try to type in the name of this file in the search feature and you'll probably find it. Okay, don't do what I didn't waste like half a day on it. <laughs> and you can just copy and paste this and plop it right there in your server and just forget about it. Now you're done. Okay. Now that being said, another limitation, which really isn't that much of a limitation when you think about what you're trying to do, is you cannot use any possible binding that WCF offers. You can't use an MSMQ binding, for example. Okay? You have to use the basic HTTP binding, which is essentially just a nice BP 1.1 web service. Okay? So we have the same basic, basic profile. So here's the service we're going to build. You, a lot of you guys have been to my talks before. You know I favor simple things. I'm a simple man. <laughs> so we're going to have a really easy service that defines one service contract that's going to return back an array of custom types, and they're going to go ahead and just have some stateful data. And we're going to bind that to a grid. Okay, so we're going to be able to read these properties and bind it to a data grid. So we have a data grid, right? 
So let's take a look at the actual service itself. Now I do have this project open somewhere. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to begin by looking at the service. And again, if you haven't done WCF, just pretend we're doing an XML web service. It's pretty similar. Well, when you're doing a WCF service, you know, they really enforce the idea of contract first through the use of interfaces. Okay? So we are going to be defining a normal, everyday .NET interface. I, I pick C Sharp. Phoebe would also be perfectly fine here. Okay? The only notable difference from if you were going to build a traditional XML web service with ASP.NET is notice how we have this new set of attributes which must be applied on various WCF bits to help the serializer and the runtime know how to marshal data. Right? So basically for every interface that you're going to write, you've got to mark that guy as a service contract. For each member of that interface, that you want to be exposed through the WCF plumbing, you got to mark him as an operation contract. But that being done, this is just a basic interface, right? So I got a method that returns an array of a custom type. So far, so good? The custom type is a data contract. Right? So this is going to help that serializer understand how to persist out an array of these things. And for each piece of the contract, we're going to mark that with a data member. Okay. Now that's just the contract, right? So you've probably all done interface-based programming. You know that interfaces just define a contract. But now we've got to implement that contract somewhere else. So that's going to be the job of this guy over here. Okay. Again, trying to keep it simple and friendly. I'm just going to go ahead and implement my interface that has exactly one method. My one method is going to allocate an array of circle data. Okay, that was that contract. Each circle data object has some state. They're going to have a message. They're going to have an ID and a color, which I'm just using a string here. I could have used an enum, but I was lazy. And there's going to also be a Boolean. Is this a new circle? <laughs> or was it an old circle that was in the database? Right? So the idea here is obviously here you'd probably be reading a database of some type to get product and then use that product to return back an array of product infos. Okay. Now, uh, some of you might have picked up on this too. Maybe you can't see it that well in the back, but we're also using some new C sharp syntax, the uh, collection init syntax. Right? So we're able to go ahead and hydrate the state of all these objects with this initializer set. Okay. Okay, so that's it, really. That's, that's the entirety of the service. Uh, the only extra part that we get when we make a new service type is we're going to be given a web config file. And remember that we have to purposely restrict ourselves to basic HTTP binding. So we're defining an endpoint. Um, I gave a talk on WCF a while ago here. You guys might remember the ABCs, right? Address, binding, contract, same stuff. Okay? So if I were to actually run this page, I should say start this service. Um, similar to an XML web service. Oh, I didn't set that to be my start page. Service.cbs. So similar to a um, XML web service, when you run the WCF service, you get this little auto-generated test page. right? So I could see the WSDL definition. I could get some snapshots of what the client-side proxy might look like. So he is just a basic service under my IIS install. So that's the other thing I want to point out. That's, that's kind of is the key for why this WCF part is so cool, right? This is inside of an isolated virtual directory on my IIS install. So this has nothing to do with the Silverlight applet. It's just some random place on my hard drive. 